Welcome back, everyone. This is Wicked Sources. Today, I'm going to talk about some more vape news that's going on, specifically relating to the vape industry, like vape juice, e-liquids, Nick salts, things like that. A few days ago, I had the pleasure of having a conversation, and I interviewed one of the vice presidents of a major vape company. This specific one is Solace. And I have more dates and more interviews with other companies like USA Vape Labs and more. So this conversation was pretty straightforward. I haven't had any clarity. I haven't received any type of um, formal letter from the state because here in Los Angeles, we banned flavor vapes in, I believe, late September. And no one has received any formal letters yet, kind of giving us a direction of what to expect next. So this was a little worrisome, but it's also slightly good news. When I spoke with Alex Altius, the vice president, he told me that right now, everyone is being affected from large companies to small companies. But in his words, Alex was saying, the small ones are the first to suffer and the last to recover. So, through the months and years, we're most likely going to see a consolidation of brands. And a lot of your favorite choices may not be available anymore because they can't survive the scrutiny. The current standards that the FDA has required for vape juice is pretty damn high already. And most of these companies have already made sure they're compliant every step of the way. Now, this industry has been going on for about 10 years. I think the very first units were on the market around 2007. And it rapidly exploded after 2012, and even more so after 2015. So we've seen a little over a decade with this technology and the actual uh, products like juice. If there were gonna be any issues, it would, have, it would have happened in the early years, in my opinion. There's been way too much regulation since then. So we continued to talk. He said that Solace has a representative in foreign affairs dealing with the politics side. So they have someone in Washington and they're sitting down with all of these important people and explaining to them what is going on. And this is good. I imagine some of these other vape companies are doing the same thing, like Juul and USA Vape Lab and various other ones, My Blue. This is going to give all of us an opportunity to kind of voice our concerns because vaping does have a substantial and very important application. It's helping people stop smoking. Now it's taken a century, nearly a century, to reverse all of that really, really awful marketing by the cigarette companies like Big Tobacco. We've had people painfully addicted for nearly a century. What we're doing now in terms of this ban, is reversing nearly a decade of hard work and public perception. It's taken 10 years. I mean, when was the last time you walked down the street and you smelled cigarettes? It's not very often anymore because we have shifted public perception. People are believing that this can work and they're stopping. And from there it gets better because the nicotine compounds in salt, are not as addictive. They don't bind to the brain like freebase nicotine does or the nicotine that's found in actual cigarettes. Those are painfully addictive. They're very well engineered by very smart people. So as we continue to talk and the interview proceeded, he let me know that right now, no one knows what's going on, but at least we have the opportunity to talk to regulators. That's the first step. The second step, turns out that the FDA has brought lawsuits against California, Washington, and anyone else, I think New York as well, for banning flavored um, vape juice. The reasons, I don't know exactly why. I believe some articles have suggested that the states are out of their um, authority and only the FDA has the ability to do such actions. But we'll see what happens. I feel like this is really good news because since we haven't received a formal letter, since there is pushback, since we can talk to regulators, this may all just drop off. And in recent news, I discovered that uh, even Trump is backing off the ban because of uh, you know, uh, the, the next presidential run. 
He doesn't want this looming over his head as there's millions and millions of people who vape and they can just vote against them for doing something like this. So that's purely political and not as important as really establishing the foundation and the understanding of what these products are for, how they work, and the fact that they've been regulated. They're at some of the highest standards, even higher, I believe, higher than food. And that was according to Alex. And what they're suggesting next is almost like chemical grade type of facilities, which is really unnecessary. But some of these companies have the capabilities to do it if they truly need to and it happens let's say tomorrow and the FDA says you're gonna to have to do it like this and manufacturing has to be done in a very certain way and this is what we expect well they're ready to do it but Alex was saying that it's uh, it's unnecessary it's uh, literally the facilities that they're suggesting are for chemicals now some people would suggest that you know the ingredients in vape juice are chemicals I mean nicotine is a chemical but the PG and the VG that's in it as well is food grade. So all in all, that sums up the interview. I picked his brain as much as I could. This is what I found out. Look out for the, look out for the next interviews that should be coming hopefully in the uh, next week or so. We're trying to find some uh, balance in the schedules. Everyone's incredibly busy, especially those in the Department of Regulation and dealing with regulators. So week after week, we're starting to find out more. So tune in and if you want to leave comments down below, please do so. Bro smash the like and subscribe if you want to. Wicked Sources, thank you. <laughs>